And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome again to Your Prayer Intentions. Very happy to spend a half hour here with talk, with prayer, with interviews, all to pray for your prayer intentions. Before we begin, I do want to mention that if some of you had problems getting to the prayer wall this week, we had some updates to the website and there was a glitch. So the prayer wall was down for a period. So if you were not able to post your uh, prayer requests on the prayer wall or wondering what happened to the prayer wall, that's the reason. So the prayer wall is back up. So if you have a prayer request that you want to post, and the prayer wall, frankly, is the best way to get your prayer request to us because if you put it up on the prayer wall, not only do I see it before I record the show, but anyone who visits the site and visits the prayer wall can see it and offer a prayer for your prayer intention. So, And they can not only offer a prayer, but they can click on a button and then you will see what prayer they offered which is kind of cool. So the prayer wall is back up, with back, back functioning. So please visit it. That's at wqphradio.org slash prayer wall. Or if you go to the site, there'll be a click on where you can just click on prayer wall as well. And of course, if you want to get your prayer request to us, there are several ways. You can call the station itself. You can call the office and the person can write down the prayer request. That takes a little, little longer to get to us because someone has to type it in or write it down or email us. You can email us directly, and that can get gets forwarded right to me. That's at WQPH893, our uh, call letters 893, at Comcast.net. That's WQPH893 at Comcast.net. That's a very good way to get prayer requests to me. Also, you can tweet us. At WQPH Radio, which is the Twitter handle, and the prayer request will get to me, we be forwarded to me as well. So, all of those different ways. And of course, if you see me on the street, a plump guy in a hat, of course, in, at church, I won't be wearing my hat. You can always give me your prayer request in person or hand me a note. Always better to hand me a note because I always have a million things going through my mind. Now, before we begin and our prayer and our list of people with prayer requests, I do want to remind everybody that adoration is coming back to St. Bernard's. It's going to be in two more weeks. A reminder, it's going to be in the church proper. It's not going to be 24-7, but there will be adoration in the church proper. Now, of course, if there's a mass, a funeral mass or something, the adoration won't take place during the mass, but if you want to swing down St. Bernard's, that's supposed to start in the middle of September. Adoration will take place, and I think that's a very good thing because... Given all that we have going on, we need more adoration. We need more rosaries. And in fact, I do a lot of rosaries every day. I do three 20-decade rosaries a day. I usually like to do them at work. I'll be doing my work, and I'll be praying my rosaries while I'm I'm at work. And I probably should try and do it more when I'm not at work, too. But when I'm driving or at work, it's always a good time for me to pray my rosaries. But, I mean... Padre Pio used to do like 23 full rosaries a day. I do three 20-decade rosaries. But you don't have to remember. You don't have to do three 20-decade rosaries. You don't even have to do one 20-decade rosary or even one set of mysteries. Just do one. If you if you think you don't have time to do the rosary, just do one decade. Just take the time to do one decade of the rosary each day if you're not already doing that. And you will be surprised at the difference it will make for you and the difference it will make for everyone. When there are hard times, the thing to do is call upon the Lord. And think of what think of what happened. I know I'm doing this part earlier, and I didn't mean to. But think of what happened with Jonah. Think of Jonah, you know, going through Nivea. You know, Nivea is going to be destroyed. Nivea is going to be destroyed. People repented. And what happened when they repented? God laid off. I mean, Jonah was upset about it, but that's not the point. The point was to help save Nimea. So do that little pot. Do that little rosary. You do not know the value of that little rosary. But I can guarantee you the enemy does, which is why he doesn't want you doing it. Anyways, let's get to some prayer requests. First, our standing prayer requests, of course. We have the standing prayer requests for the 
local pastors, for Nancy, for Mary Lotz, for the uh, supporters and donors to WQPH Radio, which keeps us on the air. We very much appreciate it. And if you would like to become one, just go to the website again, wqphradio.org, and hit on Donate, and we'll happily have you help us pay the electric bills and the transmitter bills and all those other bills that we have. Um, We have a prayer request for a person who's having a very hard time in his marriage, very hard time in the marriage. We have a young lady who's about to have her first child. We have a couple that's in quarantine because of the COVID-19. We have a thank you prayer request or request for thanks for a person who just got a new job. So a prayer of gratitude there. It's nice to get a prayer of gratitude. We have our standing request for uh, conversions and there's a lot of those so <laughs> you know if, if you hear it you know we're thinking of those conversions uh we have a prayer requ- now some online prayer requests we have a prayer request from charles who's having trouble with his finances we have a prayer request for a family um there's a divorce that's taken place and a Mother and daughter are being evicted, so a prayer request there, both for the eviction situation and for the terrible thing that divorce can be. Uh, we have a prayer request from Becca, whose father just passed away, so we pray for both Becca's grandfather, I should say, grandfather passed away, Becca's family, and for the grandfather. We have a prayer request from a fellow by the name of Sam, who's been sick and he's recovering at home. He's, he's a student, and he's been... He's been having pain and nausea, so we have a prayer request there for Sam. we will be happy to pray for Sam. We have a prayer request from Joy, who has um, issues with health and fin- and finances. We have a prayer request from a fellow whose father's been in. I, I don't know how. I don't know if I'm pr- pronouncing this right. Intubated. Uh, it's not looking good for his father, so we have a prayer. He asks that we pray that he passes peacefully and, of course, for his family as well. We have a prayer request for a father of four whose daughter is been sent to the hospital is in bad shape. We pray for the daughter and for the father. We have a prayer request from Alex, who has a friend just pass away. A prayer request for a friend's mother who died, and I wasn't aware that she had died. So I, I just popped into my head. I'd forgotten about that. So a prayer request for the mother and the family. We have a prayer request for a person by the name of Zanli Nwalkso, and it was, it's a birthday. So happy birthday and a prayer request for you on your birthday. And we have a prayer request for just for support for a family. Support for a family. So we're very happy to do those prayer requests. And I want to remind you, again, that if you have a prayer request that you don't want to give the details to, you can just send us the prayer request with private. Just say private request. Or email the word private. And we're very, very happy to pray for that private request. And today we are going to pray the third mystery of light and before we do one more request i want to have make a request prayer request for mercy mercy for the world mercy for ourselves and we'll pray for this in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen we offer thee, O lord jesus this eighth decade in honor of thy proclamation of the kingdom of heaven and we ask of thee through this mystery and through the intercession of thy holy mother to recognize the works of the kingdom of heaven all around us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the proclamation of the kingdom of heaven come down to our souls. Amen. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we also do this closing prayer for Visitation House and for the intentions of the Holy Father and for any intentions that could not be sent in. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. And now we're going to have the final part of our interview with Gerald Hassan Hutton, the book is Compassionate Capitalism. He had just given an example about how being generous to others makes good sense for yourself. And we'll pick it up right from that statement. Here comes Gerald. Part two of the interview we first aired two weeks ago. It's funny you mention that because I suddenly had in my mind, because this is, when you think about it, this is not some, a new idea. I'm remembering the old a movie, Miracle on 34th Street, when the character of Santa Claus, uh, played by Edmund Wynn, starts sending people to the stores to get the exact right item, eventually Mr. Macy's over there will be the friendly store, the helpful store, the store that cares more about people than profits and will consequently make more profits. And then the others mimic them because it's a smart thing. And the smart, I've often said the smart thing is usually the right thing. Well, the right thing is usually the smart thing. And is that a type of argument that you will make in the book that if you do the right thing, it's generally the smart thing, not just for yourself, but for business? Yes, it's, uh, it's pretty strategic. If you look at it in a strategy, what strengths and weaknesses are, if you want to uh, increase your strength with your consumers or your customers, you would uh, probably do things that would uh, inspire them to do, th- do better things. What are the type of things, if you're, again, if you're a small business or if you're a media, if you're talking any kind of corporation and they want to do something virtuous or you want to talk them into, you should consider something virtuous. What is the argument that you would make, as, again, as an innovator? What are the things you look at to see, what can I do, how can I do it? Well, one, one benefit is that your employees get to uh, use their, uh, their, their brains and sort of cross-fertilize in terms of ideas. And... Uh, uh, one of the teams we had when we went out to Habitat for Humanity was to uh, uh, let the people who were the better carpenters teach the others how to like nail in uh, fixtures and things. And uh, uh, some of the uh, technicians that we had that were on a lower level were teaching their managers how to do things. And so uh, everybody learned more, uh, more skills. And so you increase your skill base. And uh, this is generally helpful in... Uh, in an innovative environment as well, because the more exposure you have to different things, the more you can bring in unrelated items and synthesize it into a new idea. The most valuable resource are the people because a resource is, but a person can take that is and turn it into something different, can come up with an idea or an innovation or a part of a process that they never even thought, that no one else has even thought of, to make something bigger and better. Yes, that's a good point. Some of the, uh, like a scientist in my position at, uh, in a large corporation, uh, wouldn't really get out to any distribution or marketing or anything or interact with consumers. But uh, when you put them into an environment where they get to meet people, you realize what the people's needs are, and you can bring that back and say, well, how can we make a product to address the needs of those people? 
And one of the projects that we started at Kraft was uh, uh, it's called value-based nutrition. Uh, most companies are trying to reach the upper level consumer, the upper income people. And uh, we, we thought, well, what about a counter trend where you can make our product uh, less expensive to consumers to help the uh, lower economic uh, strata? And we wound up with a, uh, a product that uh, uh, made our uh, macaroni and cheese, our blue box macaroni and cheese, uh, 10 cents a box cheaper in terms of cost. And we would share that with the, uh, the consumers. So the company made money, consumers got a cheaper product, but the, the nutritional value of that product was even higher in protein than the uh, macaroni and cheese that we, we're currently producing. Full disclosure, I like Kraft macaroni and cheese. I think it's a very underrated product. I, I, I actually take it. And I look, and, and when you're a consumer, when you don't have, and I'm, not a, I'm certainly not a higher end consumer, I look, that five cents or that 10 cents I'm saving, that makes a huge difference for a person who does not have that. T it's 10 cents. And there's actually a lot more consumers who don't have that 10 cents. So you're dealing with a bigger audience, which is a bigger potential sale. Well, and it's it's easier to sell a, a, make a 10 cent profit on a lot of things than to try and talk someone to paying $100 for a glass of lemonade. Oh, yes, especially if you're a very large corporation and you're s selling uh, millions of dollars of product at that ten cents adds up over a lot of units, and again, that's one of the one of the ideas to innovate in there. And to what degree, when people see this type of thing, that okay, I am trying to help you out. I am trying making this effort to give a hand. Do they recognize and appreciate it? Have you in your book? Do you talk about that? Do people recognize when a corporation is actually doing something for them? Actually, is I'm sort of uh, disappointed by some of the reaction because. Some of it is cynical. They're saying, well, this company is just doing this for the PR. But my reply has usually been, so what? As long as somebody's doing it, who cares what they're doing it for? I mean, if they get publicity out of it, good for them. I would have a problem, however, if they claim to be doing something and they're not. That would that'd be a different story. But that's something, Actually, that's something we sometimes will see in, in a thing. When you, if you have someone who's starving, if you have someone who needs a hand, it's like the old saying about the starfish. Oh, you're not doing it. You're not helping all of them. Well, you don't have to help someone. Just help the person next to you. Help the one person. Yes, exactly. And that's one of the uh, proposals that I make is that uh, uh, look at your own community, your own block. Is there somebody on your block who is suffering? And go help them out if you can. Because it's not, if, and if you use the excuse that you can't help everybody, People use that excuse to help nobody. But if you help somebody, even if you help some person, I mean, Jesus did not cure everybody in the Middle East. He cured the people who came to him. And even at one point, in what, the woman from uh, the Canaanite woman said, oh, I was only here for the people, the lost sheep of Israel. And she pleaded and he eventually relented. So why not do what you can and succeed where you can succeed? Oh, it's exactly right. And... Uh uh, that's a lot of what was uh, drummed into me when I was going through my Catholic education. And I imagine there's a lot of that in the book as well. Yeah, yes. And in fact, Chapter 2 is, uh, uh, talks a lot about religious tradition and uh, the impact on businesses. And uh, the three Middle Eastern religions are very similar. They uh, uh, recognize that God does not spread his benefits evenly among everybody. But uh, the, the wealthy are uh, commanded to help the less fortunate and the uh, the consequences are pretty drastic if you don't do it. And it makes and it makes a huge difference when when you kick in when you help out. People tend to remember, especially when you're down and out. When someone has given you a hand, you tend not to forget it. I think one of the sayings that I remember was that uh, be nice to the people on your way up, because you're going to meet the same people on, when you on your way down. Well, the book is compassionate. Capitalism, the intersection of economic growth and social justice. If there's a single lesson that this book gives, what is that lesson? Uh, the lesson would be that if you are well off, that uh, try to do the best you can to help people, even if you write a check. If all you do is write a check, first of all, do your due diligence and check out any charity that you contribute to. Make sure that they are eff effectively utilizing that contribution. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's look to your neighbor to help your neighbor because they are the closest person to you and, and that you would understand their needs better than someone who doesn't know them. All right. And where can people find this? If people want to find this book, where can they find it? Uh, the book is on Amazon in hardcover 
or in uh, the Kindle version. And you can also order it from your local bookstore since it's uh, distributed by Ingram, and uh, any bookstore can obtain it for you. All right, again, the book is Compassionate Capitalism, the Intersection of Economic Growth and Social Justice. The author is Gerald L. Hassanel, right? Hassanel, yes. I, I think I got it right that time. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts about the book and your thoughts about compassion and faith and business. All right, thank you. I'm sorry, legally blind. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm sitting across from you, and I did not realize you were legally blind, which would... Well, and, and so actually, it's a good reminder to people, to our listeners here, that your limitations are not as big as you might think they are. Well, I hope we all enjoyed this this little visit here. And that was Gerald Hassenhut, and the book is Compassionate Capitalism. Well, before we get to our final uh, prayer that we close the show with every day, I want to remind you that directly following our show on WQPH and any other place that's carrying our stuff will be Talk Catholic. So don't go anywhere. As soon as we're done here, Talk Catholic, which provides an open forum for listening, discussing, and explaining the teachings of the faith, will be coming up next, and you won't want to miss it. But before we get to that, let's get to our closing prayer, which we will say in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this station, all the places that are carrying this show, and to all those listening to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds, so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your Son, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know, it's silly. It just occurred to me that the whole idea of compassionate capitalism from the interview we had earlier is, I remember the Old Testament uh, line, cast your bread upon the waters and it will return to you. And is, this is not a new concept, the idea of if you're generous, people, the good things will happen to you. But most importantly, you'll be blessed. Because remember, we don't struggle just for, to make para- we don't struggle to make paradise on earth. We struggle so that we may enjoy paradise in heaven. And that's what it's all about. It's all about the souls, our souls and the souls of others. And the day we take our eyes off that prize is the day we are most in danger. And that's what our foe wants, us to forget that it's all about the souls. Well, thank you again for joining us, and we will be back next week. Until then, this is Peter and Jemmy saying goodbye. And God bless each and every one of you. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at comcast.net let me repeat that it's wqph893 at comcast.net and we will pray for you if you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer tweet me directly at the tech guy blog on twitter or the tech guy blog on gab and as soon as i see it i will pray for you god bless you